Um, over the last two to three months, I've spent a lot of time looking at compressor mounts for turbos. So I thought that I would take 10 minutes and kind of break it down into layman's terms and make it easy for everybody to understand um, kind of how compressor maps work because it's very imperative that you understand what you're looking at with a compressor map when selecting a turbo, depending on if you're going to run a class or if you want the turbo to operate inside a certain window, if you want to max the turbocharger out. All that stuff plays into effect when selecting the turbo, how much horsepower the turbo will actually do. That's on the compressor map. Um, and so we're going to discuss that this morning. But before I go any further, I just want to give a big shout out to Devin Vanderhoof. Um, killed it this past week in Sick Week. Uh, he's got that white convertible big block turbo car. Um, he's been working really hard for the last couple of years to get there. And then last year, he had an engine failure on day one, which pretty much sucks dick. But he, uh, he took this last year and got everything together, completely changed the combination in the car. Uh, Matt at Performance Fab done a great job getting all that stuff together, all the little intricate pieces that has to be worked out to make that combination really want to drive on the street. Um, and then Devin's hard work and perseverance and attention to detail really brought that car together to do sick week in an excellent way. Jordan Tuck drives for him, done excellent with that too. They put that car on a 235 radial and went out and just completely kicked ass in the rowdy radial. One pass a day, uh, one hit and quit, let's go. Uh, and they've done fantastic. If you get a chance uh, to look at that car through some of his videos, please do that. Just go over to Devin, type in Devin Vanderhoof or HCR Innovations and check that out. Um, awesome guy, got a lot of good parts to sell you, some high quality wiring harnesses. If you deal with Holly EFI, he's got a lot of videos with information in it uh, to help with that too. But anyway, so when we're selecting a turbo, there's a lot of things you need to take into account. I mainly do drag racing, so I kind of figure out what times I want to run and then how much the car is going to approximately weigh. And then I decide how much power the car needs to make. And then I will select the turbo based on the power that I need to make. And then I'll build the engine to match the compressor map of the turbo. A lot of people do this kind of backwards and it's fine. But you generally end up, if you're limited on turbo size, like as in class racing or drag racing, uh, you kind of need to reverse engineer it. You need to figure out the best turbo that will make the most power, uh, depending on the rules and regulations for the turbochargers in that class. And then you need to build the car based off of that turbo. Um, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but when we get into the compressor maps here in just a second, you'll understand what I'm saying about the same turbo on two different combinations will not make the same amount of power. So you need to make sure that the combination is well sorted from front to back, and you're not just gonna take a big turbo and strap it on whatever engine that you have. You need to make sure that the combo is efficient in every area. Camshaft, heads, cubic inches, compression ratio, depending on whatever fuel you're gonna use, intake manifold, uh, torque converter, the gear ratio, and the turbocharger combined really makes uh, a combination well sorted. So if you have a combination that's already running and you're like, hey, I'll go run this class, and you strap a turbo on it and you figure out that you're three tenths off the leader and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, it's probably because everything wasn't sorted properly. Uh, and then you, at some point in time, you'll run into this thing that people uh, like to blame a lot, back pressure. And I don't really feel like, in my opinion, after looking at 150,000 tune-ups, um, leaning on combos to get their absolute maximum effort out of them uh, and then looking at compressor maps I really don't feel like back pressure is an issue I feel like it's a side effect of running out of compressor wheel so if you have an engine that is big enough that the compressor wheel can't keep up with what it's wanting on the intake side you end up pinning the wastegate shut trying to get enough drive pressure in the turbine to spin the turbo faster, but what you end up doing is running the turbo completely out of its efficiency on the, on the compressor map, and then you just end up with back pressure as a side effect of the compressor wheel not being able to keep up with the demands on the front side. So if you take a car that, like, 
you keep strapping on the dyno or you go to make a run and at like 5,500 RPMs, the thing makes 22 pounds of boost, but then you run it out to like 7,500 and it only makes like 16 or 17, you're way outside the compressor map. The turbo's not going to want to do anymore. And you're probably looking at back pressure issues and you're going, ah, I got back pressure issues. Well, no, you don't. You have a situation where the compressor wheel is just not big enough or not efficient enough to keep up with the demands of the engine. And then you run into back pressure situations as a side effect of that. It's not a cause, it's an effect. So anyway, moving on past that. It's amazing to me how many people I discuss turbo combinations with that have no idea how to read a compressor map. Now there's some like trick turbos, uh, Jose at Force and Induction makes some that he doesn't produce compressor maps for, and I get why he does it, uh, but most turbos, if they're made by Borg Warner or Garrett, uh, Holset even, uh, even Precision does some, but most of those turbos are going to have a compressor map. So you can take a look at where the turbo is going to be efficient and then you can build your combination to that and you'll actually produce uh, a better running combination all the way around than somebody that just kind of selected random parts and put them together. So we're going to take a look at this compressor map and a lot of you have probably seen one but you have no idea what it means or how it works. So I'm going to break it down into layman's terms real quick uh, so that way everybody can understand. On the compressor map, it's going to look like this. And this side over here, they they do it um, they do it kind of funny, and they label it kind of funny, and they label it as an aspect ratio on this side of the thing. But what it actually ends up being is it's just bare metric pressure. So this bottom line, which is where the turbo will be making no boost. It's generally one. They won't even. They don't even put that on the map. They just leave that section blank. And then you'll have a couple of bars up through here, and each one of these bars represents one bar. Okay, so it's barometric pressure, atmospheric pressure, whatever. This will be two atmospheric pressures. This is 15 psi of boost. This one will be three bars or three atmospheric pressures. This will be 30. PSI of boost, and then you'll keep going, and this will be 4, and this will be 45, and this will be 5, and this will be 60, okay? So that's what the left side of most compressor maps will generally look, at, look like. The bottom of the compressor map generally is labeled with how many pounds per minute of air the turbo will flow. So let's say... It, well, I'm just going to make this real easy. That's 50 pound per minute, that's 100 pound per minute, and this is 150 pound per minute. Now the math on this works out pretty good actually. It ends up being like 9.96 or something like that. But what you really end up having is every pound per minute that a compressor will flow is a, a, a hundred horsepower that the engine is making. So, I mean, sorry, every pound per minute of air that the compressor wheel will flow will be 10 horsepower, not 100, 10 horsepower uh, that the engine will produce. So what I generally like to do just for a mental thing is I go in here and I just add another zero. So the compressor map that we're going to be looking at, theoretically, this is not an actual turbo, this is just something I'm coming up with off the top of my head. Well, technically make 1500 horsepower full tilt. Now this is crank horsepower. This is not wheel horsepower for some of the douches out there that like to say, uh, well, uh, the only thing that matters is wheel horsepower. Tell your fucking connecting rods and crankshaft that. <laughs> and in my opinion, crank horsepower is what really matters because that's what you're actually serving the engine. Um, now if you want to talk about how fast the car will go down the racetrack, now you're talking more in the wheel horsepower range because there's, there's other things in the drivetrain that will be consuming horsepower that will rob you of that. However, if we're just talking about what the turbo will do, what the engine will do, what the head gasket will theoretically take, what the head decks will take, what the cylinder walls will take, we need to be looking at crank horsepower, and that's what we're doing here. So every pound per minute that the turbo will put out is almost exactly 10 horsepower that the engine will make, all right? So 
1500 on this turbo. Now, the, the map itself is where things get really fucking weird looking and people get lost and confused. Don't get lost and confused on this. I know the map itself looks like a drunk tornado. I mean, that's, that's generally what they look like. But they'll start out somewhere like, they won't start out at exactly one because the thing's not making any boost yet and it's not very efficient down there. And it'll start out something like this and then it's like balloons out like this and then there'll be like a flat spot and then it comes back to a peak. And then that's generally what a compressor map looks like. And at the very end of this, we have 1,500 horsepower, 150 pound per minute of air consumption for that the turbo will put out. And then we have our boost level on the left side. So let's say we want every single thing we can possibly get out of this turbo, right? We're going to want to be in this area right here. But in order to get in that area, we must make 45 pounds of boost. So if I took this and strapped it to a 450 cubic inch engine, we will never fucking get 45 pounds of boost. Ever. That motor makes a thousand horsepower before we ever even get fucking started. And so before we ever even really try to make any boost at like 15 pounds, we're done running this thing way off the fucking map. Like way off in this area. And that is not efficient. The motor's going to run into back pressure issues because the compressor can't keep up with the demand. And then now you're trying to pin the gate shut and try to get to this theoretic 1500 horsepower that, that the turbocharger manufacturer said, this turbo will do 1500 horsepower and it won't unless you stay inside this map so theoretically if I had this I would think mm, I got to get to 45 pounds of boost but I'm only going to need to make 1500 I'm only going to get to make 1500 horsepower so I really need this motor to make about 400 horsepower at the beginning that's a fucking 4.8 with a cam that's like 300 cubic inches in a camshaft with a decent cylinder head. Uh, and then I can get to my 45 pounds of boost and theoretically be around the 1600 mark. Uh, but you get what I'm saying here. So 1500 would fall right in there somewhere. So that would be absolute best case scenario for this turbo map. If you go into a situation like this and you're running another car that has a properly set up situation, uh, you're going to be, you're going to get your shit flogged. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. So when you're selecting a turbo or you're building a new combination and you know it's going to be turbocharged, please look at these compressor maps. So, like, if we only had a motor that made 800 horsepower uh, total, even after 60 pounds of boost, we're going to be up here at this very peak. So if we had an engine that's too small and we're running it up here, the compressor's going to be out of, uh, it's efficiency range because it's not flowing enough air across the fins per RPM that it's spinning per pound of boost that it's making so it's actually restricting the compressor wheel and then on this end of it if you have a motor that's consuming too much air right and you can't get enough PSI in it to make the compressor wheel efficient and it's consuming way too much air then you run into drive turbine back pressure issues because you've run the compressor wheel completely off the map the engine's trying to consume too much horsepower per pound of boost that it's making, and it's just not going to work properly. Um, but that's pretty much it. When you go to look at these compressor maps, don't let all the, they'll have RPMs in here, like, it'd be like 40,000 RPM and 80,000 RPM and 100,000 RPM. You really don't need to be concerned with that. That is, that is not your situation to be concerned with. Just at a quick glance, all you need to be concerned with is how much horsepower the turbo will make and how many pounds of boost it'll take to get to that mark. And then you need to build the engine around that, um, around that pressure number. Now, I will say this. So if a motor makes 400 horsepower at nothing here, at no pounds of boost, then at 15 pounds of boost, the motor will theoretically make 800 horsepower. At 30 pounds of boost, the motor will theoretically make 1,200 horsepower. At 45 pounds of boost, the engine will make theoretically 1,600 horsepower. And at 60 pounds of boost, the engine will theoretically make 2,000 horsepower. So you have to take your base engine horsepower and efficiency and then start seeing where you're going to lie. So this is 0 pounds of boost, 15 pounds of boost, 30 pounds of boost, 45 pounds of boost, and 60 pounds of boost. 
So I want this engine to operate right here at the peak of this thing. So I'm going to need about 40 pounds of boost to get that thing working. And guess where we lay? Right here. So we end up right at the peak of the compressor map. So I need a 400 base horsepower engine to actually get this turbo to work inside of what it really needs to do. So that's basic rundown on compressors um, and selecting a turbocharger. In my personal opinion, the first thing you need to do is figure out how much horsepower you want it to make. Um, and then if you'll select this turbo properly and you're not running up here, so you're not running a turbo that's way too big for the application, and you're not running down here, you're not running a turbo that's way too small for the application, and you're running it right at its peak efficiency, the turbo will be extremely responsive also. So there's no reason in, in thinking that you're going to end up with a turbo that's laggy. Uh, if you'll look at this compressor map and kind of pick that peak, you will end up with the best possible scenario that you can think of. That's about it. I appreciate it, guys. You guys go have a great day. Uh, check out Devin. Check out Matt at Performance Fab. Um, both great guys. They both do excellent work. Uh, but have a great day.